Hey, welcome to a special edition of This Week in Marketing, specifically five moves in social that every new agent should make. I've got my guest here, Jason Pantana, really host of The Marketing Show. But Jason, there's so many people coming into the space and one could argue someone's watching this right now, they could be three years in the business, they could be 30 years yeah. in the business and they just want to become more relevant, but I want to specifically focus on someone that's been under 12 months in the business. What are the most important moves they've got to make to position themselves online so they win, so they stand yeah. out, so at least their friends say, yes, he's a real estate agent. Yeah, I love that. And I think the first thing that comes to mind right out of the gate is, a, you have to obviously set up your different pages and profiles, but you mm. really need to think strategically about, okay, what's my profile image? How do I create matchy matchy across the web? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna help interpret for you. So what do you use it like across all okay. the different platforms? So let's what, go what platforms. Yes, let's go new agent. So okay. Instagram, Facebook, your Facebook personal profile, yep. plus a Facebook business page okay. for running ads, mm -hmm. TikTok, YouTube, your Google business Link, page. LinkedIn, maybe just modified to whatever your new, you know, your new career yeah. versus your old career. Yeah. Um, what about um, Zillow, Realtor, Homelight? Should I go to all those as well? Like every possible portal? You really, you really should. And so here's the deal. Like we call it search engine results pages. When somebody mm -hmm. Googles for a realtor and they Google for you, there could be any number of pages that rank, but social networks and sites like Zillow, Yelp, realtor.com. I know yep. those are like a mixed match there, but they all have tremendous SEO. So I yes. would actually just call it like, it's a Saturday work day. You're going to go through and kind of, I would, I would think through like, okay, what are the things, the raw materials I need for doing mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be, I need a great headshot. Yep. I need a great bio. I'm going to have to be prepared to kind of make longer versions and shorter versions of the bio. I typically recommend, this may be hard for a new agent, but I typically recommend don't write your own bio. Um, I either recommend using some type of a software, like mm -hmm. maybe an AI, like jasper.ai, yep. and it can write your bio, your, uh, bio and help you really ideate on it. Cause it's hard to write about yourself, especially right. when you're new right. or hire a copyright. Like I hired a copywriter mm -hmm. and we had a meeting and we talked about what I wanted and then he wrote it and I was like, great. I could never have done that myself yes. because it's tough to read the it's label hard. when yeah. you're inside the bottle, yeah. right? It's hard. But I would get the raw material. So it's bio, it's headshot, it's things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I would literally- Sh Should I have the same headshot across every one of the platforms or should they be different? You know, cause like in the past we've talked about like, yeah. you know, have a different look for Instagram, a different look for Facebook, a different, right? But I think in the beginning- I'm gonna actually recommend that it's to your benefit to have it be consistent across the board because most people, too. they're not really paying that close of attention. Right. And I want them to make that association Oh, that's, that's them there. That's mm -hmm. them there. Oh, that's them there too. Yes. So I want yes. that easy association. So just, you need like a Saturday work day, get all your stuff lined up, bio headshot, mm -hmm. and then just go to town, home right. light, realtor, Zillow, Google business page, Instagram, right. Facebook, just set up every page, every profile, every account, and then call it a day. You did an amazing work that day. That's right. the first thing I'd say. So the goal is basically anywhere somebody could search for you, they're going to find you. That's right. right. So, so you can go as broad as you want. But, but I wouldn't do is just skim a few. Yeah. I wouldn't go light on anything. Any button that should be filled out should be filled out. Yeah, and if you're kind of questioning like, okay, so really where do I start? I would go look for some prominent agents. I would Google their name mm -hmm. and I would see what ranks and right. I would use that. I would also do searches on Google like best real estate agents in your market. Right. And you're gonna see, well, who's running ads on that mm -hmm. search phrase? Is Homelight running ads? Mm -hmm. Is endorsed local provider running ads? Right. Is what's And then you can use that to kind of be a guide for where should I prioritize my time and attention in terms of setting up pages? And then obviously the big social networks, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, we yes. already talked about those. Yes. Okay, So so really step one is, be findable in a systematic way online with the right headshot, yep. the right bio. Yep. Um, if if there's endorsements that could be had there, should we be asking them for asking maybe former coworkers to say, could you write a review about me? It's not going to say anything yeah. about real estate yet, unless you've done a couple of leases or done a couple yeah. buy side transactions and absolutely get those. But in your opinion, uh, a page without reviews is hard. It's, it's hard, hard, right? So is it okay if the reviews say Jason Pantana was the hardest working guy I've ever met, more dedicated, more focused, something other than yeah. nothing? Yeah. I, I think when you're starting out, it's kind of like when you're getting your first job. Well, this job requires experience. Well, how do I get experience exactly to get that right. first job? Right. That's kind of the paradox. Yes. And so a new agent is definitely in that kind of a position right now. It's the paradox yeah. of how do I get started? And so, yes, I would say tap into your network and look for reviews. Don't try to fake it. Don't act like you sold a house that no. you didn't 
and sell, no, but no, no. there are soft skills that could be yes. talked about, like right. your personality, your intelligence, your track mm-hmm. record. Yep. And I would lean into those things hard because every agent got their start somewhere. I mean, right. I remember trying to convince someone to let me list their house for the first time, and I did, but it's it's difficult to do when you're new. And so you have it to- It would have been weird if your mom said no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Podcast humor. It was yes. an open house. I yes. met somebody in an open house. One of the neighbors. Exactly. Well, that's you know one of the great lines is hey, uh, you know most consumers they go with the very first agent that they meet, and you could argue and they like. Yeah, so, I had to pull a couple of tricks to get. It's a whole different story. Yes, but right, it, we'll save more, that for another yeah, show. It's another show. Okay, so um, that's number one. What's what's number two? Assuming they've done that, they've checked that off, or maybe they just need to go back and audit. I'm just saying, all my friends out there, maybe you need to go and audit and make sure that everything is modernized, new, matchy, matchy, et cetera. What's number two? Yeah, so I would say, and by the way, one, can I add one more thing? Sure. On the headshot, because this is just me yes. leaving no detail left behind, yes. right? Yes. Don't do like the full body shot, because most people, when they're scanning Instagram or some app, they can't see your facial features. No. So we need a closer crop shot of your right. face where right. I can actually see your face. Yes, and don't, okay. and don't hide yourself if you don't like the way you look. That's just yeah. weird, right? Like yeah. just, you are who you are. Take the photo up close, let them see the features. That's they're right. gonna connect with your eyes. They're gonna say, I really like her smile. Like that stuff happens, and that's, that's the first step of engagement. Yeah, I, totally, totally. Okay, next one on my list is, I'm going to talk about the importance of strategic networking on social media. So what I would do is do some Say major that slower one more time. I'm going to, to talk, talk about, about strategic. I don't remember what I said. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. Yes. Uh, strategically networking with yes. other top producers in your marketplace or outside of your marketplace on mm-hmm. social. Mm-hmm. So like I think about our ecosystem of our amazing coaching members and we have right. so many who agent influencers where they're just crushing it on mm-hmm. Instagram or TikTok mm-hmm. or YouTube. Mm-hmm or whatever it is, I would do some major reconnaissance and figure out who are the players, whose content do I really like, I really love what they're doing. Yeah. And I really connect with them. Right. Yeah, it resonates. Mm-hmm. And be bold, be brave, send them a DM, mm-hmm. comment on their stuff. And a couple of things are gonna happen. One, you're gonna start to take in some inspiration on what you like about what mm-hmm. other people are doing. Mm-hmm. And we call it, in your famous words, R- R&D, rip, rip off and, and duplicate. duplicate. That's right. Yep. Yep. That's the first thing that sets in. The second thing is the law of reciprocity. Yes. As you comment on their posts and engage and become somebody they know on social media, uh, two things happen actually. One, human nature is reciprocity. They're mm-hmm. gonna start to reply and comment on your stuff as you post yep. and so forth. So it's really, really important on social networking to social network. Right. It's really important. Get on people's radar. Yeah. And the other thing is, like this is maybe a little bit TMI, but algorithmically, every major platform is algorithmically primed that, hey, if I comment on your stuff, it's gonna take that as a signal that you're likely to comment on my stuff. Mm -hmm. And so in your feeds, you're gonna start seeing my stuff and that back and forth happens when there's interactions. Right. So it's actually algorithmically intelligent to Mm -hmm. social network on these platforms. So Say that one 12 times fast. So it's actually- uh, Algorithmically, see I could even do it. I had to fly all day, I don't have it. Okay, so (laughs) so number one is get get all your profiles set up correctly. Number two is, Identify people in or out of your marketplace that they should be engaging with. I've heard about them. I Googled, you know, top agents in this marketplace. I saw somebody on TikTok. I was like, wow, I want to follow him. I want to follow her. That makes a ton of sense. Should they be a little more strategic and potentially go to uh, howmoneywalks.com and actually say, hey, here I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Cook County, Illinois, AKA Chicago, has the highest number of people moving into my area. Should I try and network with agents in Chicago as an example? Yeah, Even as a brand new agent, that feels advanced. But but here's the deal. It's, I mean, I don't know the quote, but it's like, be bold. If you wanna, if you have high intentions, high aspirations for yourself, be bold. I would look at how money walks. Mm -hmm. I would even look at like some of the van line services produce data, Right. Um, Atlas and others, they produce Mm -hmm. data. You can also go to census data and figure out where people are moving to and from. That's a hard website to get around. (laughs) Yes. It's called the census flow mapper. Google that. Yes, yes, good luck, good luck. Click They're like, the let me just link. get my profiles done. Okay, I got that. Step step one, step two. But I think there's I think there's something to it. Like, yeah. okay, am I going to just kind of guess mm-hmm. arbitrarily about, oh, I'm going to network with agents in this part market? Or am I going to try to network with people who are in feeder markets where there's right. actually a level of actual business synergy going on? Of 100%. course, that's totally a smart way to kind of figure it out. Good, um, good. So I would say that's the second one. Number three is you got to make content. Mm-hmm. Um, so... We talked a lot about setting up your profiles, doing kind of the initial foundation work, but now you got to create content and it needs to be video content. Mm -hmm. And I know for a lot of new agents, there's going to be a mindset oftentimes that I've encountered where they're like, but I'm new. Who would want to listen to me? Um, What do I know? 
And I got to tell you, like, that's a mindset you'll eventually get over, but the yep. sooner the better. Right. Reality. I would, yeah. I would tell everybody go to Liz Novello, right? Uh, just happens to be Gary Vaynerchuk's little sister, yeah. longtime coaching client of ours. She went out of the gate and just started creating content nonstop, telling the story of being new also. And her business has absolutely flourished. Yeah. Not just because of that, because of so many of the things she did that were right. But the first one was, she was honest about it. I'm brand new. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to my first totally. open house. Hey, I'm touring houses for the first time. It's so different to look at houses as a real estate agent versus a home buyer, home shopper. Yes. And she just, she talked about her experience and her sphere were like, I love it because it's like HGTV. Yeah. It's like million dollar listing when the new agents yeah. get on there. It's the same exact thing. And and generally speaking, most people want you to succeed. Yes. So like we have our own head talks, yes. but most yes. people want you to succeed. Yes. And I had a conversation with uh, a coaching client the other day on the team of one of the teams I coach about being relatively new and feeling underqualified for making videos, telling mm -hmm. people about real estate in any kind sure. of an informative way. Yes. And I was thinking about a video of Byron Lazines that mm -hmm. I watched, mm -hmm. which... He went through the 87% of agent stats, yes. which which for those listening, the stat is basically in the first roughly four years of being in real estate, 87% of agents fail, mm -hmm. which may not be that encouraging given the context of today's topic, sure. but- Or it's super encouraging. Yeah, or yes. it's super yes. encouraging, right? Depending yeah, do on- Do the right stuff. Do the right <laughs> stuff. But what he said was is agents oftentimes get a really bad reputation. Mm -hmm. And if you're a new agent, you may not know that, but welcome mm -hmm. to the industry. Real yes. estate agents often get a bad reputation. And Byron's logic was it's because the odds are consumers came in contact with one of the 87%, right. not the 13% who were the no, great exactly. successful agents. Yep. And so it's really incumbent, in my opinion, on every smart, capable agent to start spreading the word and really vocalizing what they know about real estate. Fact yes. is, if you're licensed in the US, for instance, you are licensed by your state. Mm -hmm. You have a license wherever you are that says you are eligible and professional and an expert to talk about real estate. So mm -hmm. whatever drunk monkey there is that's telling you otherwise. Yes, and so I'll flip it too. There's also um, like being a DJ of everybody else's content using yeah. an old school social strategy, True. which is, Hey, I'm reading this article from you know our MLS or from our association or our broker just released yeah. this, or I'm reading this art article from one of the top real estate coaches, Jason Pantana, and he says, da, 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 da. And as a consumer, I just wonder, what do you think and comment below? Yeah. So you can use everyone else's content. You can read headlines, you can read stories and then ask your listeners for their opinion. There's a lot of power in that because you're not saying this is my information. You're I read this on removed. Human News. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg said this, but I went to my broker and I asked five other top agents in my office this question. And we all, what am I assuming there? <laughs> yeah. Five other, yeah. we right. all, yeah. we all came to the same conclusion that the answer is X. Yes. Right. And now all of a sudden you're, you're over that story, but we should also tell them there's another cool site called answerthepublic.com. Yes. Answerthepublic.com, yes. three free queries, I think it is. I think three every or five, day. something like that. So you could literally go there and say, um, you know, real estate. Are interest rates in Houston causing home buyers to be nervous or something like that? Just real estate, interest rates, Houston. And it will go out and search the web for all the questions that people are asking related to those keywords. And then you could go back to that site, yeah. jasper.ai, and put in video script. script. And it yeah. will write the script for you. And just like that, we've removed all of your excuses. That's, I mean, absolutely. So like, there's actually a few things just to kind of synthesize what you were saying. Like one is touring properties out in the field. Right. Just use your phone, document everything right. as a new agent. Like, right. hey, this is the perspective of a new agent right. in the field. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, people are going to want to go along for the ride with you mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. In your stories, in your reels, in your content, you should be doing that. The other but thing- But don't I have to be remotely entertaining? Um, you. You have to be yourself. Okay. Um, so, I mean. Because we know some people that are dry and boring yeah. and they kill it on video because they just are who they are. I'll put and it like they, this. Like attracts like. You have, to be re you have to be like wildly consistent. And here's why. That's Because yeah. every algorithm, like Instagram in particular, if you're super consistent at making videos, even mm -hmm. if they're dry, sarcastic, mm -hmm. and boring, mm -hmm. it's going to find an audience for you as soon as its algorithm learns, oh, Jason makes content like this for people like that. Right. And then it's going to go shopping my content and explore pages eventually to help me find a following. Yep. Now I'm somewhat like, it's going to happen. You have mm -hmm. to be wildly consistent. And how as far as- How consistent is consistent? is consistent. Well, I mean, easy for me to say. Yeah, I like what David Schwartz is doing. So David Schwartz is doing a Big real shout out to David every, Schwartz. Yeah, yes. He's killing it. He's doing a real every day. Yep. He literally just grabs his phone. He started that in October at the summit. 
Yeah. And he hasn't stopped. And here we are yeah. in whatever month we're in. April. He's at like a day. He's almost at 200 now, 200 yes. days straight. So yes. his deal was he committed to answering a question every day mm -hmm. as a reel. He had his phone like this, vertical style Instagram mm -hmm. reel. Yep. He's going to answer one real estate question using sites like Answer the Public to kind of source yeah. the ideas and Google Trends, yeah. Answer the Public, Ask Your Friends, right. whatever, read the comments of other people's videos and right. get the questions out right. of there. All the, like he had, a, there's plenty of questions about real estate. Yes. Just Google it. There's yeah. plenty of questions. There's he committed a lot of content. To, yeah. He committed to 30 days and now he's at like day 200 plus or right around that mark because people have been so intrigued at what he has to say and his insight. And man, he's gotten really good at it too. Right. He right. was good from the get go, but he's gotten really good. You know, I think he stayed in his lane. He went comfortable, easy questions. I don't want to say all softballs, but like easy stuff. So the stuff that you get asked anyway at the soccer field or with your friends or at a dinner party or at church, right? You answer those questions first and then you start to figure out your chops, yeah. your cadence. Yeah. Should I pause? Yeah. Should I add music? Should I add text? You start doing some of the other little all platform specific stuff that really make it sing. Yeah. So are you recommending that as well? I, I am. So it's like, again, doing the new agent, touring properties, I'm going along for the ride. That's a great video strategy. Yeah. The reactions you talked about where here's what this news article said, or here's what, huge. so it, like that's a huge way of doing video. Right. Or like what David Schwartz is doing, mm -hmm. which is basically I'm gonna answer a question as a reel every day. Yep. Um, you, you cannot over index on video content. No. And whatever hallucinations you may have, I'm making an assumption mm -hmm. here about it's too much content, it's too much of me. I'm right. like, let the algorithm worry about what's too much yes. of you. And yep. you just make the content and it will go find you the audience for that content. Yep. So, oh man, I actually just thought of a cool show. It'd be like Bloomberg versus, you know, Buckhead. Like you take Bloomberg versus the actual city that you're in. What does so, it say versus? So I Bloomberg love that. says this, or CNN says that, or NBC Financial, whatever says this, and then here's what you're saying, right? Yeah. On the streets, that'd be a really good show. Somebody should capture that. You should do that show right away as a brand new agent. Yeah. Okay. Tours, no doubt. Let's talk about um, hyper local experts rule the day. Right, they do. You look at all the consumer data they want to work with. Like, I like Jason because he's not just from Nashville. He's actually from Franklin, and he's actually at this church with his kids at that yeah. school. And he's like me. That's who I want to work with. What should someone listening to this do to become online that person? Okay, so let's talk about the simplest way first. Mm -hmm. You should make video content that's mm -hmm. specific to those like neighborhood tours. If you do mm -hmm. walking tours, mm -hmm. a lot of agents do that in the beginning and it's actually really great practice for learning areas. Mm -hmm. Go tour newer construction in the area. Um, get permission from listing agents to tour properties where you have the consent to basically say, hey, here's what 650 gets you in X neighborhood. Right. And you make content that is super focused about those areas. Be the person who knows what the zoning change means and they're going to build a new dealership or whatever it is. Right. Okay, just, I got to interrupt. One of yeah. our clients, and sorry, she's from Houston. And when you see me next, you can punch me. I was on that little tour last summer. Yeah. She walks up and she's like, listen, baby, I am all in on video. I go, what are you doing? She goes, I sold 52 houses last year. I'm like, all right, how long have you been in the business? She's like 18 months. I'm like, wow. tell me what you did. She said, I would go to the new construction developments and I would say to the builder or the site salesperson, are you guys okay if I walk around and shoot a live on Facebook and show people what this is and what it's all about and how much it is right down to like, here's the brochure and here's the pricing options. She's like, and my friends would just go, can I afford that? I want that. Where is that? Yeah. She did that over and over and over. So it's kind of like- Sean Gerald did the same thing. The product, right? So Sean Gerald, Queen City House Hunters in Charlotte, he goes live like every day, oftentimes touring properties. And it's basically like remote control Sean. Hey, walk over there and show me that again. Because he's live. He's reading the comments. Right. And- Right. He's in the field and people start tuning in because he's consistent. He's wildly consistent. And then it turns into something. So I'd say like, you've got to create video content that is super on top of everything happening in your local community. Should they, should they go as deep as like drive, drive communities where I go online and I research who are the developers, what kind of product, you know, are they all three bedroom, two bath? Are they all quarter acre lots? Whatever, you know, whatever it is, have that level of detail and then drive through and explain all of that. I mean, that would be amazing. But I would say, I mean, I don't want to create a barrier where it's difficult, but I think if you're going to go after new construction, I think it's incumbent on you to have some kind of knowledge of, I'm not just walking around like a consumer. I have some kind of optics on what's going on in the marketplace. So what about yeah. schools? What should they do with schools? I think they should interview principals, teachers, and I think they should be anybody who's parents. credible. Yeah. Parents, they, they need to be careful that they're not steering or doing anything like that. 
But if they interview- I understand Fair Housing, make sure you yeah. Google that also as a brand new agent. Yeah, but if you go to the actual officials of the school, you're gonna probably be, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not giving legal advice, but you should be safe in doing that. But I think that's gonna be massively valuable. Like imagine interviewing the principal of an elementary school and say, hey, I've got your numbers printed off from greatschools.org. Can you talk about what these numbers, how you, yeah. what did y'all do to get to these numbers? Right. And do a video interview like right. that. That's hyper local content. Yeah. The other thing I would say to being positioned to be discovered in your key neighborhoods is gonna go back to like Google stuff. Mm -hmm. So on your Google business profile that we told you to set up in step one, which by the way, a lot of agents who are not new are like, this is good stuff, whether I'm new or not, because this is just the stuff of digital marketing right now. But you should be really key in saying, what are the service areas that I provide real estate services to and list them off in your profile. Just make sure you have those keywords. Yes. If you're in Brentwood, Tennessee, spell it out. You're in Brentwood, Tennessee or whatever it is. It should be all of your Google business page, all over your website. It should be in your bio. It should be on everything you do because people are searching for things. Like actually they just extended on Instagram. They just extended the character limit of your display name. Yes. And so now you can be a lot, even if you have a long last name where you have limited characters, you can be really clear on where I do business because imagine somebody met you at an open house and they're like, oh, who was that real estate agent I met? They were so great. And they search for realtor and then the name of the city in Instagram. Yes. Well, now you have a really high likelihood of actually popping top of the list because you have it in your display name. Right. So just keywords, 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 and all the markets you service on your Google business page in your Instagram profile on your website. Love it. Love it. Closing thoughts as we uh, as we wrap this one up. There's a, we covered a lot of ground oh, we real did. fast. Yes. We we did, we did. Um closing thoughts are it's one step at a time. Everything you do is gravy at this point in time. I mean, right now we're starting from scratch. It's it's zero to one. And so if everything we said total was a lot, start with the first one. Just take a Saturday work day, set up your profiles, and then when that phone rings and you, cause like, hey, I read your reviews, you look like a really great agent, we wanna go look at this property, you're gonna be like, oh, this works. And then you can double down, do the next thing and the next thing and build it over time. Yes, and what I would remind you of is this is just one piece of your business. It's this piece, it's knowing the contracts, it's knowing the neighborhood, it's kind of killing two birds with one stone by yeah. the way doing that, which I love. Yeah. Um, and it's also understanding sales skills and negotiations. So this is a critical piece. It's 2022 as we're recording this. The world is on social. It completely rules the environment. And it's a big part of how people are deciding today. So, yeah. so don't miss this. Take action on the five or six steps we talked about here. Make sure you follow Jason. And thank you so much for being on the show. And then, hey, do me a favor. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If there's another question. If you want Jason to talk even faster during these interviews, I can speed him up. You let us know. Jason, thanks so much, partner. I we'll see you, you guys soon.